communion at the pond? All who are thirsty come to the water, says the Lord. Though you have no money, come and drink with joy. Good morning. Good morning. Today's Mass intention for Father Pam Doyle. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are our life-giving waters. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you cleanse us of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated with the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome worthily the Paschal Mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me Ezekiel back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord. And I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the facade of the temple was towards the east. The water flowed down from the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside to the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then, when he had walked off to the east with a measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and had me wade through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand and once more had me wade through the water, which was now knee deep. After he measured off a thousand and had me wade, the water was up to my waist. Once more he measured off a thousand but there was now a river through which I could not wade, for the water had risen so high it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this, son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river, where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district down upon the Arabah and empties into the sea, the salt waters, which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundance of fish, for whoever, for wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow of the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Amen. The sponsorial song. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength, and ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth be shaken and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst, it shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The Lord of hosts.
host is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astonishing things he has wrought on earth. clean heart create for me, O God, and give me back the joy of your salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, in our endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a feast of Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem, at the Sheep Gate, a pool called in Hebrew, Hebrew Bethesda, with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat, and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is a Sabbath and it's not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. <coughs> they asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away, since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews began to persecute Jesus, because he did this on a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. So Ezekiel is led by the angel into the waters. He walks a thousand cubits, and the water is ankle deep. A thousand more cubits, and the water is waist deep. Another thousand cubits, and he's only able to swim. Unfortunately, in southern Louisiana, in this city, we are all too familiar with rising waters. I'm sure everyone has their story to tell. The story of Ezekiel only being able to swim reminds me of the story that my dad sometimes tell, tells about uh, Hurricane Betsy, that he had to swim uh, down the street to the local middle school for uh, the second floor to get higher ground. Water, we know, can be quite destructive, but it can also be cleansing, life-giving, and purifying. And this is what I think today's readings highlight, the life-giving properties of water. You see, the waters of Ezekiel were rising, but we also read that they cleansed the salt, the salt water, making it fresh, and gave rise to a multitude of creatures and plants. The fresh water gives life to trees that produce unfailing fruit and leaves that never fade. Fruit that is used for food and leaves for medicine, giving life in so many various ways. In our gospel, there's a man who had been ill for 38 years. When we read that he was by a pool known for its healing, he was so close to that cure. But when the waters were stirred up, he wasn't able to get in himself. He wasn't even able to be put in by others. He says, no one will put me in. And Jesus says to him, rise, 
take up your mat and walk. Notice Jesus doesn't need the waters to heal this man. Instead, Jesus is himself the life-giving water that heals him. It's almost as if he's saying to him, I alone can heal you. Don't rely on these waters. Don't rely on others to put you into the waters, but rely on me. Bring to me whatever is ailing you. Bring to me what you've been suffering for for so long. Bring it to me, and I will be your life-giving waters. When we turn to Jesus for our healing, we recognize that he is our true life-giving water, that only he can, can give us the, the cleansing of our hearts and minds that we so deeply desire. Even when we suffer for so long, even when we have self-inflicted wounds, it is Jesus that gives us that water, that cleanses us, that makes us new, that heals us. So as you come into communion with our Lord today, as you allow him to be your bread of life and your life-giving water, know that he alone is our source of strength and consolation. Today, as you receive our Lord, the bread of life, submit yourself to his will and rest in his life-giving, loving mercy. Together, we bring the following prayers and petitions for our families, for our friends, for ourselves, and for the world. For Pope Francis and all the clergy who shepherd the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for government leaders, may God guide them in governing in an ethical manner, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those afflicted, affected by extreme weather or natural disasters, and for all who help them with recovery and rebuilding, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, you gave us your Son to be our cleansing, purifying, restoring waters. May all who drink from him have eternal life. And please hear and answer our prayers, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God, all creation, for your goodness, for every season, for every offering, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and the work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as creator for this our mortal life and effect in us the healing that brings us immortality. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, it entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his, of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, his bishop, Gregory, our bishop, Cherie, his assisting bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, I love you.
first, Lord, we pray for every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Communion Antiphon, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose, near restful waters he leads me.
Let us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament, that we may find help for our bodies now and likewise in times to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for a blessing. Grant, O merciful God, that your people may remain always devoted to you and may constantly receive from your kindness whatever is for their good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Quick announcement that this evening uh, upstairs in the parish center, we'll have a praise and fervor uh, with praise and worship music and the opportunity to share with faith and scripture. All are invited to that. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thank you, God. St. Michael, the Archangel, your presence is now to be our protection against the wickedness and sin.